good morning children welcome back to the social session children uh, in the last class we tried to understand about uh, one of the most famous uh, mauryan ruler that is ashoka who is a unique ruler who uh, sent his message through the inscriptions to other countries also like uh, egypt uh, syria sri lanka and uh, many other countries uh, with the help of rock inscriptions and with the help of the palm inscriptions Today, let us see some of the kingdoms and uh, empires in the Deccan region that is in the central part of India. Uh, around the time of the Mauryans in the Deccan, uh, conquered from the Godavari to the Tungabhadra river valleys, large parts of the regions were uh, developed uh, uh, as a village settlements and small towns in which uh, uh, tools, iron tools uh, trading was done, selling and uh, purchasing was done and uh, other items were also made up of uh, uh, clay were also sold there. In some other areas, they also mined gold and uh, made ornaments, gold and uh, made ornaments, gold made ornaments. However, most of the other areas which have the, uh, which have been forest with the uh, hunter gatherers and uh, herders living in small settlements in the forest region. So most of the area, probably each of these areas was uh, uh, inhabited mainly by the group of uh, same family, closely related to each other and uh, the one headman who is considered as a patla in the gond punch so he considered to be the more powerful and he was wealthy and he was considered as the headman of that group such groups are called as a uh, clans vamsham we call them as okay so those clans those are called as clans clans okay clans so these clans okay which uh, they are from single family closely related to each other and uh, they have emerged as a powerful headman who led them and settled their internal disputes uh, without the involvement of other and they grew wealthy and powerful and they ruled uh, the area and during this period uh, there are some kingdoms which have emerged soon after the mauryan empire got ended up in the northern region many headmen of such clans emerged as the new kings uh, uh, for the small kingdoms and among them were the shatavahanas who are very powerful who managed to build a large kingdom Shatavahanas, Shatavahanas. These are the people who built a large empire after the end of the Mauryan Empire in the north. This is about the central Deccan India we are talking about. So they managed to build an empire which extended from the banks of Narmada river to the Krishna Godavari Delta. And the most important Shatavahana kings were Gautami Putra Shatakarni. Uh, and even Vashishta Putra Pulvami, Yednasri Shatakarni, they have ruled almost for 200 years. Around 2000 years ago, they have ruled almost for 200 years. Uh, and some of uh, them also uh, made Dhanya Kataka on the banks of the river Krishna uh, and near Amaravati. Their, uh, Amaravati was their capital actually. So they have built uh, Dhanya Kataka. That means the go-downs of the grains they have built. Shatavahana uh, tried to bring the various clans various groups uh, okay families uh, together uh, their headmen and their small kings under their control but allowed them to rule on their own and uh, without any interference from these uh, kings many of these headmen and women of their families uh, traders etc contributed to the uh, buddhist monasteries buddhism was spreading very fastly in india during that period 2000 years ago so they have contributed for the construction of the buddhist monasteries you know monastery where uh, the be people of uh, uh, Buddhism followers pray is called as a monastery so it's like a temple for them so they have contributed for the Buddhist monasteries and they built stupas also one such stupa built in Amaravati, Bhatti Prolu, uh, Vadlamanu are built during the Shatavahana period only the Shatavahana kings also made a large donations uh, of land to the Brahmins and the Buddhist monks monks in the sense the uh, preachers of the Buddhism are called as monks even in uh, Christianity also you find monks isn't it Christian monks who wear a small cap? Have you seen them? So such kind of Buddhist monks uh, uh, were given large pieces of land by these uh, Shatavahana rulers. These lands were also made of tax free. They used to not collect any kind of tax from them. And uh, no tax was to be collected from, the, uh, from them. During this time, trade with the distant places like Bengal and even Rome became very important. Even with Rome and Bengal, the trade continued uh, with the Shatavahanas. We find a large number of coins uh, uh, including Roman coins and pots uh, uh, made in Roman style we find in the excavations conducted and uh, we also find Mercandes uh, was probably transported in the boats with the help of the sea 
coast and over the Krishna river in the interior parts uh, like uh, Amaravati. So with the help of this uh, river water uh, ways only the merchandise means the cargo the things which can be transported from one place to another place. So this merchants, uh, merchandise was uh, transported from Rome to uh, Shatavahana's kingdom and from Shatavahana's kingdom to the Rome. And if you look at the Kotilingala uh, in Shatavahana times, uh, so Kotilingala is actually situated on the uh, at the confluence of Peddavagu river, they, at the place where they joined Peddavagu and Godavari in Jagityala, district of uh, Telangana upstream. The Godavari upstream we find this one. Okay, and uh, at the upstream of Sripada Yellampalli uh, project, the project which is located there at the confluence of the uh, Peddavagu and uh, Godavari, okay, in Jagityala district, uh, there you find this place called as Kotilingala. It was the capital of uh, Asmaka Janapada. You remember about Maha Janapadas and Janapadas? We all belong to the Janapada called as Asmaka Janapada and Kotilingala was considered as the capital of uh, Asmaka Janapada. And out of the 16 Maha Janapadas of ancient India, Asmaka is one such uh, Janapada and it was the first capital city of uh, Shatavahana dynasty also. During excavations conducted there, you know what are the excavations you learn? Digging, Kojana. Okay, this kind of uh, digging used to be conducted by the archaeologists in order to study the ancient history. So, they have found uh, a good number of uh, silver punch coins. You know what are the punched coins? Hole right in Polo deke polo polo. Polo kaya kabi? Punch. Beach me hole right Why see? So, the silver punched coins, uh, the, it looks like this. See. This may hole right This is called as a silver punched coins. Yeah. So, as it is made up of silver, uh, so they are called as the silver coins and uh, they were marked pre Shatavahana period. Pre means before Shatavahana period, Shatavahana period and after the Shatavahana Ikshwaku period coins also were found in the excavations and valuable antiquities. Antiquities means the goods which were used by those people. Okay, those items were also found such as uh, pottery was found, terracotta. Uh, figurines were also found that means sculptures were also found uh, ma made up of a clay called as a terracotta and uh, a ring well constructed ring well well generally we open wells you know it but they were constructed wells were also found with the brick clean that means they have the knowledge of the bricks was also found several coins of uh, uh, Simuka the founder of uh, Shatavahana dynasty and those of other early rulers like Kanha and Shatakarni were also found in these excavations. So, in these coins, uh, uh, their uh, figures were also uh, printed. So, they have the knowledge of these uh, coins printing. It had a mud fort with uh, several uh, gates and watchtowers on four corners. So, mud forts were also built by them. And uh, they also have watchtowers. You know watchtowers? If you uh, look at the Charminar, there will be watchtowers on its four sides. Minar. Minar ke jaysa ni. Those are called as watch towers. And coming beside uh, the Kotilingala stupas, uh, Viharas, Chaityas of uh, Buddhist uh, uh, monks are also found at places like uh, uh, Fanigiri, Nelakondapalli, Kondapur, and Dulikatta, uh, Peddabankur, and Kisaragutta in Telangana state. These all are the sites where you find the Shatavahana's uh, excavations. Uh, and how did these headmen of some clans have become uh, small kings? We shall see in the uh, next class, children. Thank you very much.